how much potential is unrealized in this empty wine bottle. Today, we're going to show you just some of this potential. This valueless waste will become something practical, something with high value, something that we need. A metamorphosis that will demonstrate the boundless potential of waste. The idea was born out of the desire to not recycle. Instead, take responsibility for all of the materials in our system. What's wrong with recycling? Recycling's an okay system. It's not a great system. It's certainly not a zero waste system. This excites the hell out of me because it's a craft that doesn't exist. What comes next is only limited by our imagination. I can't explain how this metamorphosis happens, but I can introduce you to a man that can. I'd like to introduce you to Mark Chiavula. Second generation potter. That's right. Guy knows how to uh, spin a wheel. Uh, but yeah, I remember uh, obviously, you know, we were uh, at the time trying to come up with the right cup for silo and everything. and. Uh, I think we, we both like to challenge each other with some ideas and I remember you coming to me and asking what can we do with uh, these bottles and mm. pressing the, kind of the passion we both have of yeah. turning something into, you know, which is wrongly considered as waste into something useful yeah, and bring yeah. closing the loop. I think that was really the focus. Mm. Um, and we started from literally ground zero with no idea what we're doing, to be honest. Yeah. It's like, you know, we I knew it to some certain extent that, you know, obviously some properties in the glass are present in pottery and clay as well. So mm. by no means or by I claim no right as a glass maker and still don't. <laughs> um, and I think that was also the benefit of, of this whole trigger of the you know the inception of the project mm. was to kind of looking at it in, in a different um, state completely you know we can marry up and, and make the material more manipulative more more, more manipulated mm. in, a, in a more liquid state rather than in a molten state mm. um, and I think that's where everything triggered I remember the first uh, results, you know, the eureka moments and quickly yeah, getting onto yeah. the phone to you and the messaging you all the results that came out. I think there's many more eureka moments <laughs> to come. Um, but to take that, like literally to cross the word recycle out with a big marker pen is, is one of my dreams. And we're, we've got a long way to go yet, but the, by design, um, the reality is on the horizon. Yeah. So I remember going into a, 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 a dark hole in the internet, <laughs> <laughs> the darkest corners of the internet, trying to find a glass crusher that could crush glass into a, a workable material. And glass crushers I sort of quickly learned were designed for crushing glass into um, tight spaces for the purpose of spatial efficiency. Yeah. Whereas, you know, those uh, glass crushers with jagged edges, you know, it's not a raw material, no. it's, a, it's a waste material. Whereas this creates a raw material that makes it, it's like milling flour. Yep. You know, you mill flour and then you have a workable material to make sourdough. It's the same principle with this and that was what was unique about this machine. The focus was only to save space rather yep. than to find a use for the glass that's being broken down in the yeah, pellet. Yeah. Mm. So yes, this has been a breakthrough obviously in our journey of finding a, a good way of using this material and bringing it back into the system. Yeah. Um, but also then tweaking it to creating a, a ceramic, you know, which mm. is uh, close to porcelain as we know and um, exploiting the, the, the benefits and the qualities of the material as well, which mm. is quite exciting. Yeah. So Mark, how does the glass metamorphosis uh, happen practically? Right, so what we do is obviously um, we use the glass that's consumed within the building. Obviously we check what wine silo has sold on the evening the night before and obviously uh -huh. as well check what other bars downstairs have uh, accumulated. We then do a bit of cleaning of the bottle so we empty any residue, any wine or alcohol that's still inside. And then yeah, we, so there's a bit of uh, work that needs to be done as you know. We need to remove the foil at the top of the bottle mm -hmm. and that we fettle it off. We leave the labels on because as such the labels through the process mm. that we do um, does get removed uh, by process but then any residue of the paper just gets burnt off in the process. Mm. And then we pass it through this little crusher, 
comes down at the bottom into a nice sand and that sand then we look for the different uh, grades because every grade of the grain is utilized whether it mm. is directly or not mm -hmm. and then we mix that with obviously this uh, formula that we've created and it gets manipulated so that we can create these lovely shapes that we put into the kiln. Beautiful. Mark's just about to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so in 2018 there was about uh, 3.1 million tons of glass in America um, gone to recycling, 68% of it went to landfill and that's about yeah, 28 million bottles I believe. Wow, um, that 28 million, million bottles, bottles going to landfill, buried in the ground, which take over 10,000 years to biodegrade yeah. and the um, expelling excretion of methane in that process is like so catastrophic to the environment. I've seen 9,000 tonnes of, of, of glass and that's just a mountain, let alone 28 yeah, yeah. million. <laughs> so 28 million bottles in America going to landfill. Um, yeah, we need to crush it. Let's crush it. <laughs> Let's crush it. <laughs> End of transmission.